Hello again. Well, I thought I'd uh, make the next video. Um, you can tell, probably, that I've dressed the motor uh, a fair amount. Most of the stuff is just sitting on there right now. I'm just checking some clearances and allowances for various various parts on the motor. Um, one big event since last we were here is I painted the motor. I gave it a good cleaning um, after installing the oil pan and the timing plate, the timing cover. Uh, so I gave it a really good cleaning, uh, took out any remaining areas of concern as far as rust and oil coating and all those goodies and uh, masked it off and then uh, gave it a good, uh, a good painting. I gave it two coats of, two coats of high temp primer, two coats of high temp paint, and then two coats of uh, uh, clear. So, Motor painting's done. I think I told you I was gonna paint the dipstick. There's the dipstick there. And I left the head of it black. And uh, seems to seems to want to work well. You can hear it hit the relief of the windage tray as it goes goes on past and down into the oil pan. So that's a success in my book. Uh, I went ahead and uh, stuck the uh, the, the exhaust uh, headers on there just looking at clearance and bolt allowances and things like that but uh, I'm gonna leave them on don't need to do anything more there uh, they're straight bolt on the casket I don't need to show you that for sure um, got my uh, valve covers perched on there got a couple of bolts in them holding them down set my uh, Edelbrock uh, intake manifold on again I'm just kind of making sure everything is uh, clearanced and everything's doing okay this is one note from the uh, last video. I apologize. I didn't talk about the windage tray clearancing I had to do. Uh, basically, I ended up using two um, grade 8 machine washers on each of the um, studs where the windage tray mounts, and that gave me plenty of clearance. And so uh, it doesn't take much uh, there to do that. Just no problem. Easy to do, clearance did right up, rotated the motor over, you know, visually checked my clearances and it was uh, more than adequate. So anyway, now we're going to, uh, in this video, we're going to size our push rods. Um, I cheated and I already sized them, but I'll show you how I sized them, what I discovered while I was sizing them. And then uh, the ones that I, you know, I actually ordered the right, correct size and they actually should be here by UPS today, so. Anyway, we'll come back and start, uh, we'll take the, some of this bling off the motor and then we'll start looking at uh, size and push rods. We're going to get back to our video now about uh, determining push rod length. Um, here are our roller rockers, Scorpion Racing products, proudly made in the USA. And uh, I'll tell you, it's a, it's a very good package when it comes. Um, 16... Uh, roller rockers, aluminum, anodized blue. It's a shame to put a rocker uh, a valve cover over it, to be honest with you. Uh, but it's what you got to do. Let's talk about what's in here. Obviously, you have your individual roller rockers. Uh, here's the uh, push rod into this one. And then the actual roller rocker here. And then here's the saddle uh, where it rides. And uh, there, it's just beautiful. Anyway, uh, also you've got these uh, rocker guides that go, they should, uh, one rocker guide per cylinder, and then each one of them has, actually this is the rocker saddle, and then the rocker bolts. Well, we're going to go ahead and try to size up these push rods real quick. Um, there's a lot of ways of doing it. This is how I'm, I would suggest you do it, it's how I did it more or less. And uh, so it'll show you. Uh, basically, I started with a stock push rod. Let me talk to you about a stock, stock push rod real quick. If you're going to upscale one of these 5 liter motors, whether it fits or it doesn't fit, get rid of these stock push rods. Um, they were designed for fairly weak springs. Doesn't matter if you're going with a strong double spring or a strong single spring. You up that spring uh, compression force considerably, you're going to be at risk with these push rods bending. So just throw away these stock push rods, no matter what you require. But 
In our case, because of our change in uh, valve geometry with different valves, different rockers, um, and different head gaskets, uh, it's causing a considerable change in our uh, in our rod dimension. So, by the way, these are 5 16 rods for this motor if you go to order and you'll know. Um, if you'll notice, the rocker is tight on there and the rod's going up and down or you can just move the rocker and see how much play we have. So, how do you know what to go with? Well, what I did was I used some feeler gauges. Um, this happens to be about 49 thousandths right here. It's a 23, 24 and a 25 thousandths together and it was still too large. So we're over 50 thousandths, greater dimension. So what I did was I went to Comp Cams, my preferred vendor for this product right now at least, and, and I looked up their, their chart of available uh, push rods, and uh, these are two point, excuse me, these are 6.248 in dimension. So if I had 50 thousandths, I'm around, you know, 6.29, 6.295. So I went to 6.3. Uh, 6.3 is listed as a stock for them, and so I went to the 6.3. Now, how do you how do you know this is going to be the right size? Well, what I did was I took a set of veneer calipers. I used a push rod length tester, and I turned it out until it was 6.3 inches long, and then I tried it out. And here's what happens when you when you actually try it out. By the way, when you're putting these things together, uh, it's pretty convenient to use one of your bolts over here to hold your rocker channel in place. So we get rid of the stock. I put in the 6.3 that I measured with my veneer calipers. Put this back together. So how do you know when it's long enough? Uh, it's long enough when you go to the point of resistance, which is right there. Get resistance on the push rod against the rocker. And then I take my uh, torque wrench set at 20 foot-pounds. Now, on these particular rockers, you want to reach 20 foot-pounds within half to one full turn of this bolt. So, starting here, I didn't go to half. Let's look at it again. Well, I guess one thing I didn't mention, you need to be sure that the lifter is all the way down. So how do you go about that? Let me show you real quick um, what I did. Uh, one way to make sure the lifter's down, this lifter's down is make sure this lifter's up. If this lifter's up, this lifter's all the way down. It's just a given. Um, let me show you, you can just turn the motor over. And you can watch this lifter rise. Well, yeah, push it down first. Watch this lifter rise. And you can see it rising. So this lifter's up, this lifter has to be down. So again, let's try this one more time. 6.3's worked in other places I've tested it, so I'm gonna trust this is the right dimension ultimately. Okay, we got friction. Yep, that one's a little short of a half turn. It's just gonna have to be that way. If you, I look at the other areas on the head, um, I get a full half turn and then a little bit. Um, I went in and ordered 6.3 inch from Comp Cams. They came in today and uh, they fit wonderfully, at least on the other head. Uh, you know, there may be one or two that are slightly different for reasons we don't understand. Uh, and I'll be sure and check out more on this particular head, make sure this particular head. For some reason doesn't have a different geometry than that head basically this is what you end up with um, put these on earlier these are our comp cam 6.3 uh, high strength uh, they're recommended for these this particular spring combination uh, so they're high strength uh, push rods and uh, they ride great and one of the downsides to this particular block or this particular motor configuration is you cannot see the lifters uh, typically they'll say you know rotate your motor to your lifters rise if you look right in here you can't see your lifters you're basically blinded by these lifter retainers uh, versus the old dog bone style but you can still make it work 
you just need to monitor one of your a push rod uh, just to see the thing rise and go down now if it rises and you continue to rotate the motor you will have to push it back down because it doesn't have any spring pressure to shove it back against the cam so anyway that pretty much wraps up push rod sizing um, again it's important that you you know I could sit here and perfectly determine my push rod length but why bother with that you've got to have a push rod that's reasonably available on the market so go look at who you're going to want to buy your push rods from check their their stock list see what they make um, I mean they make them in 10,000 increments typically um, find the find the size that you think will fit and then use it so that's it for now we'll talk to you again next time bye bye just a final update on this video um, I think I, you saw I was struggling with uh, this rocker to get uh, half turn took it all back apart put it all back together and then it went to a half turn before it hit uh, 20 foot pounds most likely just a matter of the end of the push rod wouldn't see it squarely in the ball or in the socket uh, up underneath the uh, rocker or some something silly like that but uh, 6.3 inches works for this motor check it see what works for you valve trains all together um, now we can move on to other things next thing we're going to do is probably prime the oil pump uh, put in the rear seal put in the cam galley plug prime the oil pump hope we do that tomorrow and uh, we can put some rocker covers on it and uh, I've got a set of intake manifold bolts ordered and uh, once they come in we'll install the manifold uh, intake manifold I'm gonna leave I'm gonna set it on there tonight and consider the motor uh, pretty much closed up and uh, keep the dust and debris down so it's looking good looking nearly uh, hardly complete but you know the, the bulk of it uh, it's gonna start looking uh, looking more complete. Talk to you next time. Bye-bye.